solution to SpaceX Starlink's problems after the update. Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. Thank you so much once again for joining me for Tea Time. Today we have a little bit of Fireside. You know, I love that smokiness, guys. So good, so good. I hope you're joining me with your cup of tea, maybe a cup of coffee, hanging out, talking tech, talking photo, talking video. Today is a tech day. The last video that I did, there was a lot of questions and people had problems and it had to do with the update that happened. And I told you guys that there could be a problem, at least what I was getting from you, from the community, that there was a problem with the heater, whereas the heater would turn on once the update was done. And I was saying that you need to go into the software, into the application and turn that off. Well, we're gonna get into that and problems with turning it off or just getting into the software itself failing. I'm going to get into that with you and how to fix it. Thank you so much for one of the community members for sending that over to us. Also, I want to answer one of the questions that has to do with the dish actually changing, changing position after this update. Now, some people have seen it, some people haven't, and I think it depends on where you're located. All right, so we're gonna get into both of these issues in just a second. But before I do, I wanna say that if you haven't downloaded any of my eBooks as of yet, why the hell not? They're free. Go check them out. Go over to jchristina.com forward slash books. Once again, jchristina.com forward slash books. Also, if you enjoyed this content, even at least throw it a thumbs up. That would be great. Don't forget to subscribe if you're not and click this little button over here. So when I go live or when a new video comes out, you will be notified of it immediately. And if you just want more Starlink content and that's what you're here for, and you're not here for video or photo, well, I put together a Starlink-based PlayStation just for you. Go check it out. There's about 130, 140 helpful how-tos, tips, tricks, all kinds of videos about Starlink there. Check it out when you're done watching this video. I'll put a link maybe right about here. Also, if you just wanna give back to the channel, you can do so. YouTube gave us that little button down here. It says, thanks. <laughs> you can click that, give a dollar or two if you want. If not, that's fine too. Consider becoming a member. That would be even better. So let's jump right into this. Now, I got a message in from Ken R. And he's out of Canada. And he wrote to me, he said, hello, and thank you for your YouTube videos. No problem, Ken. Thank you for being here. After Friday's outage, I noticed that my dish is pointing straight up. It has always been tipped to the north, now completely flat. The weekend before last, we had very strong winds. Not sure if that had anything to do with it going flat. Works fine, just flat. Is that normal? Any concerns do you think that I should have? And let me just say this. The pointing of the dish is very important for what they are doing over there with SpaceX. And that dish sometimes changes. When I first started with beta, let's say, or at the end of beta, coming out of beta, the dish that I have here, which I'm in the Northern Hemisphere, was always pointing north and slightly east, northeast. Well, a few months ago, that changed. I made a video of it. Maybe I'll put a link to it right here where I'm pointing to the dish where it's not pointing north anymore. It was rotated and is now pointing east, northeast. Remember what I'm saying? East, northeast. No longer north. So now it was pointing at a tree. And I'm like, well, that's not very helpful, is it? Thank you, Starlink, for doing that. So I had to go and cut down some of the tree so it actually could see the sky as it needs to. Now, at the time, I speculated that I thought that SpaceX was doing this on purpose, whereas I'm on the East Coast, it was going to take my dishy or my Mr. Bevel, as I call him, and point him over the ocean. Why? Because there's a lot of satellites that are flying over the ocean that are not being used. So I might as well use them instead of me, like all coastal residents, adding to the congestion interior to the country, we might as well get our signal offshore. And that I think is what they did. And after a while we found out that I was right. So everyone on the East Coast, their dish started pointing towards the East over the water. And everyone on the West Coast, their dish rotated from North 
to the west. Why? So it can point over the ocean on the west coast. Makes sense, right? So I wouldn't worry about the position too much. Now, I went outside to go and check mine out, and it was a little bit different. It did change. I brought my phone out there, and I used the level on the phone just to see what the angle was, and then I also used the compass to see where it was pointing. And as of right now, we're sitting at about 23.5 degrees. Or if you go in reverse, it'd be 156.5 degrees out of the 180. So it's laying back a lot. Now, according to the compass, it is pointing due east now. No longer north, no longer east, northeast. Now it's just east. <laughs> All right, literally over the ocean. But instead of it sitting at about 25 to 27 degrees, it is now laying back even further, back down to 23.5 degrees. So it's pointing more up than over the ocean. Very interesting. So I wouldn't worry about this. Now, heavy winds is really not gonna do too much to the dish. It is pretty steadfast. It is really secure. And the gears in that, unless you're really ranking on them, is not going to be affected. Now, I know this for a fact. Why? Because that dish that I have on my roof went through a hurricane. And not only a hurricane, a few microburst tornadoes right in this area. So it held up fine. So like I said before, don't worry that it's leaning backwards. I think that things are going to be changing over time, and right now it just needs to lean back. Now if you didn't know this, the dish actually needs 100 degrees of view of the sky. So what that means is 100 degrees all the way around, not just in one direction. So by leaning it back, it's being able to now get more of the sky and less of the lower area, which normally has trees in it, maybe a building or whatnot. So way back, I think it was in 2020, Starlink or SpaceX asked the FCC to allow them to, instead of pointing their dish at about 40 degrees, to allow them to set it back to about 25 degrees. And back in 2020, the FCC said, yeah, go ahead and do it. Well, it looks like they're leaning it back even more now because mine is at 23.5 degrees. Now, is that allowed by the FCC? I don't know, but honestly, I don't care. As long as I get good signal, that's all that I'm worrying about. So to kind of sum up, if you're trying to figure out where to put your dish or if you wanna move it to some other location, make sure the location has a clear view of the sky, 100 degree clear view of the sky. Make sure that it's on a secure surface, either mounted to your roof, mounted to the side of your roof, mounted to a pole that is cemented into the ground or something like that. that that is very, very important. You want to make sure that there's no obstacles. Now, if there is some type of obstacle or obstruction, you can find them using the Starlink app. You load up the app and you just sit there and you move it around and it will find where those obstructions are. And then you can now move that dish to a different location. And finally, you want to make sure that it's away from trees or any type of buildings because you never know if Starlink or SpaceX is going to change the orientation of that dish. You don't want to be like, like me, where it was perfect when it's pointing north, and as soon as they moved it to east northeast, I'm sitting in a big tree. <laughs> and then I had to go up there with a chainsaw and cut off some of the branches so I wouldn't have that obstruction. Don't be like me. Now, a lot of this is going to go away once we see the version 2.0 satellites up there in LEO. Why? Because number one, it's going to increase capacity, meaning that you're gonna reduce the amount of congestion. Number two, it's gonna lower latency. So if you're a gamer or you need to do something that requires low latency, you're gonna get that with the new satellites. And then finally, you're gonna get better reliability, meaning you're gonna have less outages because there's gonna be more of them and they're going to be stronger. The version 2.0s have a capacity of, I think 4X over the current units that are out there. So this is going to be massive once those version twos are up there. Now the second problem, actual problem, came in from a nice person called Cameron B and said, hey, I took your advice. I went into the Starlink app to go and turn off my heater. But what happened was, is I was not able to turn it off. I came up with this type of error. It says, quote, you must log in with your account associated to the router to update settings. If the problem persists, try rebooting your router. Now, what he said was, is he rebooted it over and over and over. 
And he kept on getting this exact same message. Well, after looking around online for a while, he figured out what the problem was. So there's a couple of ways of fixing this. Number one, if you're going through a web browser, and let's say you're going to 192.168.100.1. If you didn't know that, write it down. If you go into your browser and go to 192.168.100.1, it'll take you right over to your router, right over to SpaceX Starlink's unit, all right? And in there, you can do basically almost everything that you can on the app that's on your phone, all right? So a lot of people use that instead of using their phone. Now, if you go into there and you cannot log in, what you need to do is to clear your storage and clear your cache and clear your cookies. When you do that, it resets things. And when you go back and log into the site, you'll be able to log in. It will not give you that error message anymore. Or an alternative to this is simply use a different browser. So instead of using Microsoft's browser, use Chrome. Instead of using Chrome, use Firefox. Use something else. But if you always use Chrome, for example, just simply go into the settings and now clear out your cookies and clear out your cache and then close the window, reopen it, and then go back into 192.168.100.1 and chances are you're gonna be able to log in. Now, if you have an Android device, it's a little bit easier. From an Android device, you can go into the application itself and then clear out your storage and clear out your cache and clear out everything. Now, if you have an iPhone instead of an Android phone, it's not quite as easy. You can't just clear out the storage. You can't clear out the cache. You just can't do it. At this point, the best thing that you can do is just simply delete the application itself. Delete Starlink. And then re-download it, reopen it, and chances are, nine times out of 10, you're now going to be able to log in. It just needed to clear itself out. Sometimes things get hokey when you do updates, and that's exactly what happened here. So once again, to summarize, if you normally access your Starlink router through your web and you're going to 192.168.100.1, just simply clear out your cache, clear out your storage, clear out your cookies, and you should be good. Once again, reopen your window and then go in. You should be all right. If you're using an Android phone, go into that specific application. Go into Starlink and then delete the storage and delete the cache. And once again, you're going to be good. iOS, of course, is harder as Apple products always are. You have to delete Starlink completely, re-download it, and once you open it, you should be able to log back in. So that is the simple fix. I hope you've gotten some value out of this, and I wanna say thank you to the community. If you guys get any information that I can now give to the whole of the community, please send it in. You can send it through an email. You can go to jchristina.com forward slash contact. You can send a DM. You can go through Instagram. You can go through wherever. Just send me the information. I would love to share this type of quality information with the entire community because God knows finding support for SpaceX Starlink is very difficult. And that's kind of what I've been doing as of late here. I've been trying to give you guys support on Starlink just because I use it every day. And anything that I find, I want to give to you and once again, share with the community. Probably tomorrow we'll be talking about photo or video, but as of today, it is SpaceX Starlink. And once again, I hope you found value in this. If you did find some value, please consider subscribing to the channel. That would be fantastic. And click this little button over here so when I go live or a new video comes out, you'll be notified of it immediately. And as I always say, throw the video a thumbs up. That is so helpful. The YouTube gods just shine their light on us dearly with those thumbs ups. <laughs> Anyways, head over to my website, jchristina.com, where you can find all the photography tools I've invented for you and me over the years. And hopefully there's something there that you might like. And if there is, please pick it up and support me and my family. That's it, guys. I'm out of here for you another vlog. Many blessings to you and your family. Stay safe, stay healthy, and we'll see you in the next one. Love you all. Bye.